Hey everyone, Crypto Kiwi here. Yes, I'm back. I know it's been a while since I've made a video, but it's not for lack of mining and doing improvements out here at the ranch. So I've bought more miners, I've bought more solar panels, I've had more power installed. There's been a lot going on. So in this video, I'm going to give you a summary of all the things that I've been up to and everything that you can look forward to in the next few videos. Welcome back. You may want to know what I'm mining right now. Well, I have 11 ASICs, so they're all mining uh, what they mine respectively. Four of those are Bitcoin miners, and I'm actually trying my hand at solo mining. So let's see how that works out. If I hit a block, it's going to be 6.25 Bitcoins, and that's going to be uh, worth quite a bit. If not, well, I had fun trying. So I'll keep you posted on, uh, on my solo Bitcoin mining efforts. I still have my 54 GPUs, so I'm triple mining right now. I'm mining Conflux, Ironfish, and Zill. So that's how, uh, how they're configured. Uh, also CPU mining, I'm still going hard on Raptorium. I've got my eight CPUs and they're doing over 2000 Raptorium a day because the uh, prices come right down and the miners have backed off. And so as a result, you're able to stack a lot more coins. So I'm, I'm going for it on that front. I have my Chia uh, farming, have 120 terabytes on there. And I also have uh, my staking server. So I have some uh, Pulsar and I have my Raptorium node and I have some Bitorium nodes. So that's what's happening on the mining front. Let's check out the rest of the improvements around the ranch. If we look at what I've done as far as improvements to the solar goes, you've seen these 75 panels before. So I've got 75 panels, these are 30 kilowatts um, from a panel rating perspective, all ground mounted. And what I've also been up to is I've put in the frames for an additional array of uh, 10 panels. But the big achievement this summer has been this guy. And yes, I've got to do a little cable management still, but I put in another 50 panels. So when you look at what I've got in total here, it's now 125 panels, so quite an effort. And I did um, this one install all myself. So dug all the holes, I bought all the materials, put all the poles in, concreted it, put all the rails on, mounted all the inverters, uh, and, and, and put all the panels on as well. So that's, that's a lot of work. Looking forward to sharing with you um, all of that uh, journey and what I had to do to get it all configured and up and running. So a lot of work on this front. The last thing to do is um, do a bit of cable management and tidy it all up, but I just wanted to share that. And based on the size of the cable that I've put in the ground, which is the kind of the biggest that I can, I can also fit another 10 panels on. So that'll be my project for next spring. Now we're getting to the back end of summer. Um, I'm not going to um, provision those um, at this stage. So that's the update on solar. In addition to the 400 amp service that I had uh, installed on the shop, and when I say installed, I did the civil works myself. So I dug up the trench and laid up the conduit, and then the electricians came and pulled it all, and then the service provider came and installed the, uh, the meter and actually wired it all in. But um, this is actually a new transformer. This is a 75 kVA, uh, equivalent roughly to 75 kilowatts. There is some slight variation between kVA and kilowatts, but at the basic level and for all intensive purposes, this is a 75 uh, kilowatt transformer. The other one was a 50. Well, I managed to use more than 50 myself and kind of overloaded the last one. So the power company had to come out and change it. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to overload this one, which means they're going to have to come and put in 100. So I'll keep you posted on how that goes. But I've got a whole video on um, the replacement of this after I cooked it. Been busy building additional um, structures and doing um, some enhancements to my shop. So this one I even uh, put another board at the back here but I put roof tiles on it and some flashing and sealed it all and I'm intending that this is pretty permanent out here. So this is actually my exhaust duct for all my ASICs and you can hear them right now. So I built a duct which I'll show you in a minute. All the hot air comes out. It's very hot right now but in case of any issues with the weather I can actually uh, I built, uh, built this kind of a uh, door so I can close the door and I can bolt the uh, the hinges and uh, the latches here rather, and it'll um, it holds that holds that all in place for the weather. So when it's hot and dry and uh, not raining, I need to leave it open so all that heat can come out, and that's a lot of heat. That's over 30 kilowatts of ASICs. There's so 11 ASICs, and they're pumping out over 30 kilowatts. So yeah, and I need to finish up the other side too, but I'm going to build up a similar kind of door on the other side. So then my shop. This is an evaporative cooler, and the best way to show you, I think, is to have somebody uh, near it so you can see how big it is. So this is a, this is a huge cooler. This will do 22,000 cubic feet per minute. It cost me nearly $5,000. So this is, uh, this is a monster. But in Texas, it's so hot, you need something like this to keep all your miners cool. So that's been a new addition to my shop. And it is cooling the 11 ASICs that I have. 
So four Bitcoin miners, HS3 for Handshake, E9 Pro, I'm doing Ethereum Classic. I have two D9s for Dash, two KA3s for Kadena, and a K7 for CKB, for the, for the Nervos. That's what all that is. Like I said before, the four Bitcoin machines, they're, uh, they're solo mining, trying to hit a block. But so all the heat didn't just go into the shop, I actually uh, built a bit of a channel here, or contained all the hot air. I do it in data centers, like a hot aisle containment. So I, I contained all the hot air in this uh, fabricated uh, cardboard that I got from the, from the cooler, the porta cool. So I um, put some wood on the bottom, put some cardboard, and that works exceedingly well at channeling all the hot air out the back of the shop. So I haven't quite finished building my room, uh, but this is a, a pseudo kind of where I wanted to get to for the time being. So this is working really well. They don't overheat. Most of the time the fan speeds are not in the you know, high fives or 6,000 RPM range. They're only around the 3,000 or 3,500. So I'm trying to do my best to look after the miners. They are a little dirty, so yeah, I need to kind of work on the air filtration aspect, but you know, I can only do so many things at once. Power, oh yeah, well I had a lot more power installed. So there's uh, some serious uh, ampage going on in this place right now. Um, if we look at the, uh, my other miners out here, actually, before we do that, I, I have a problem with uh, sodium in the water. There's already a water softening coming from the local water supply and I'm getting a sodium buildup. So I bought this uh, water filtration system, which I hoped would solve my problems, but it didn't. This is nearly $4,000 of water filters. So carbon filters, sediment filters, uh, water softeners, brine tank. So anyway, lots. I tried to do a lot on there, but I still got a problem. So I need to figure out how to get sodium out of the water. That's one of my next projects. Over here, we have my 120 terabytes of Chia farming. I've got some CPU mining going on. These are my Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. And then, of course, I have my 54 GPUs. So these are triple mining uh, Conflux, Iron Fish, and Zill, like I said. So this is a little update for the shop. One other thing to mention out here, too, is I actually, um, in preparation, Here's all the wood to build my uh, my room. I obviously haven't quite got to it yet, but it's on the list. Uh, in preparation for that, to help the, the, the surface of the floor, it had some big stains from where the guy had his RV here, and it, um, I didn't really like the, the, the I didn't want you know concrete dust to come out of the floor, and I wanted it to be um, slip proof in case they had any issues with the water, etc., etc. So I actually ground, got a concrete grinder, ground all this back, and then I put on three, four coats of this, um, kind of granite kind of uh, material, it's quite grippy. So it's a non-slip and it kind of seals everything so I'm not gonna get any, any uh, dust up. I know it's a little dirty, but it's gonna be easier to clean it and I'm not gonna get any new dirt come up from, uh, from the concrete itself. So, and obviously I bought some racking. So there's been, there's been quite a lot going on. I also nearly burnt my house down. Maybe that's going a little bit too far, but I nearly did. Here is what is left of the socket that basically burned itself out. So this thing, I pulled too much power through the wires, as you can see, it's mounted. I didn't have anything directly plugged into here. I actually had it plugged into the back of the house. There's an outlet on the back, but it was wired into the socket and it was not wired in well at all. So um, it generated too much heat to the point where it actually just melted. So I had the electricians come and replace it, but this easily could have caught a fire. You can see what it did here to the, to the outlet and there's the, the mark on the wall from, from the smoke and all the wires mounting. So. Yeah, I learned about that, and uh, there'll be a video on power safety in your house and how to mine, uh, how to mine safely. Because I obviously learned something from this experience, so I want to share that with you, so you guys don't don't experience this or worse. This is the microwave dish that I get internet at the house. It's only 50 meg down and 10 meg up. Not great, but I'm limited in what I can get. So that is my primary internet service. I've also installed a Starlink. This works exceedingly well. Sometimes I can get 200 meg download. And upload varies as well, maybe 10 or even 20 sometimes. But this offers me the ability to have a failover internet. So if I have an issue on one service, the other one is able to provide that connectivity I need for all my miners. Plus my download speed is uh, significantly more. So if I'm doing a download, I don't affect uh, my, my mining abilities. So that's a new addition. So as you can see, there's been a lot going on and I'm excited to share all that with you in the next few videos. So. There's a lot of content and I'm gonna work quite quickly here to get some videos together and pump them out. So lots to watch. Thanks for uh, being part of the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up, it really does help. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Kudokiwi out.